In the headlines, ISWAP docked three humanitarian workers, security guards in Bornu State. Federal government brings nine new grounds against Namdi Kano's release as Supreme Court adjourns trial till May. Nigerian First Lady Aisha Buhari seeks adequate investment in prevention of cardiovascular diseases. And on the international scene, Kenya arrests pastor over deaths at his church as court inquiry widens. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Updates. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for joining. Now the news in detail. Three humanitarian staff are working with international non-governmental organizations, Family Health International, FHI 360 have been abducted by fighters of the Islamic State of West African province, ISWAP. They were kidnapped alongside two security guards in Angala local government area of Bernu State. This came nearly a year after some humanitarian workers were abducted in Fatoko village near Gomboru, Angala town. Reports say that the attackers sneaked into a guest house where the aid workers lived around 5 a.m. and kidnapped them. Chairman of Lake Chad Region Civil Society Organizations, Ahmed Shehu, confirmed the incident. A, report, a reporter rather, in Maidugari Petrus Kuruzi gives us an update on the incident. For the incident that happened in the Gamburungala, where, uh, where three humanitarian workers was kid were kidnapped and then uh, uh, two security guards were also uh, taken by the uh, terrorist group uh, ISWAP. Yes, uh, we I I talked to the police uh, for any update. the The police said the the incident is confirmed, but that they are yet to receive the full details of what. Uh, of what uh, happened in in the local government so and then uh, the military too also they are yet to respond and the uh, same goes to the to the humanitarian uh, organization which is uh, fhi 360 they are yet to release a statement to make response uh, to the to the kidnapping to as well so, but for now, at the moment, now the police has confirmed the incident and then it is yet to come out publicly to to make a statement and then because they are still uh, investigating and then they are still get trying to get the full details of which they said that uh, they will get full details in the next uh, two hours. So that's what we have for now. And now on to Plateau State, just where residents of Farin Laban community of Riyam local government area of the state on Wednesday blocked the Jaws Abuja Highway in protest against the killing of six members of the community. The block had left, left many travelers stranded, with many motorists seen parking their vehicles along the road, while others made a U-turn to avoid being struck in traffic. Adamu Musa complete the story. According to the spokesperson of the State Police Command, Alabo Alfred, who confirmed the incident, said the victims were ambushed late evening of Tuesday when they were returning from mining site. Alabo said the State Commissioner of Police, Bartolome Onyeka, had since visited the affected community to sympathize with the relatives of the deceased. While commiserating with the members of the community, the Commissioner assured that the command will do everything within its power to arrest the perpetrators of the attack. To tell you people what I've been doing for you people here. I send security patrols, everything to this place to make sure that there is peace here. And, you know, sometimes when something happens like this, you don't have to challenge God because you don't know how and why. We provided police. Police was within the vicinity here everywhere. Look at this. Where is this? Look at this. You are doing with you because it's useful. You have not done wrong. 
with the area commander, when we had the corridor, we set him down. But who knows that there were people in the bush when they were doing this, their mining. Nobody knew. If we were away, our men could have gone right inside that place to go and know what is happening. The commandant of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps in the state, Alexandra Burundi, who accompanied the police commissioner, also asked the protesters not to take loose into their hands. We are really sorry about what has happened. I believe we didn't create ourselves. It is God that created us. Whoever takes the life of someone would definitely pay for it. Both Christianity and Islam don't permit killing. We are really sorry about what has happened. Security personnel, including police and troops of Operation Safe Heaven, a multi-security tax force maintaining peace in the state, have been deployed to the community to restore law and order. Ado Musa, Trust TV News, Joss. Ado Musa, there from Ajas, now to the southeastern part of the country in Enugu State, where the Commissioner of Police in the state, Ahmed Amani, has ordered the homicide section of the state's CID and tactical squad of the command to unravel the circumstances of the murder of Dons Ude, a chieftain of All Progressive Grand Alliance, APGA. And the commissioner directed that the perpetrators of the heinous crime be fished out and brought to book within the shortest possible time. This is contained in a statement issued by the state's police public relations officer, Deputy Superintendent of Police Daniel Ndukwe, on Thursday in Enugu. According to him, the lifeless and composing body of the deceased identified as a 2023 Enugu State Governorship election aspirant on the APGA was found in a bush at Ninth Mile Bypass in Udi local government area on April 25. Undukwe said that preliminary investigation indicated that the deceased was reported to have been missing since April 22 when he left his Enugu city home in a white-colored Toyota Highlander Jeep with registration number to an undisclosed destination. No less than 83 suspected criminals have been arrested by operators of the Kano State Police Command for allegedly committing various offences. The command spokesman, Superintendent of Police, Abdullahi Haruna Kiawa, disclosed this in a press statement issued on Wednesday via his verified Facebook page. He further stated that the suspects were arrested this month between April 21 and 25, during and after the Eid al-Fitri celebration in all the five Emirate councils of the state. According to him, the suspected criminals were apprehended with dangerous weapons illicit drugs and stolen properties adding that they are currently on the investigation. The Supreme Court has granted leave to the federal government to bring nine new grounds of appeal against release of pro Biafra agitator Namdi Kano. A five-member panel led by Justice John Okoro granted the leave on Thursday while ruling on the motion by the counsel to the federal government, Tijani Ghazali. The APS court also granted leave to the federal government to include the nine new grounds as part of its amended notice of appeal dated 28 October 2022. At the resumed hearing, Cancer to Namdekanu Mike Ezokome informed the court of his motion seeking for bail of his client and another seeking for his transfer to the Kuji Correctional Facility to get proper medical attention, citing his failing health at the custody of the Department of State Services, DSS, and he also prayed for an accelerated hearing of the matter. The court subsequently fixed May 11 for a hearing on the pending motion and the main appeal. A Kono State High Court presided over by Justice Mariam Sabo, MNI, has granted permission to slam the order of Mandamas on Kono Attorney General Musa Abdullahi Lawal to formally charge House of Representatives Majority Leader Al Hassan Adodogwa in an alleged case of murder. The court accepted the prayers of one of the state retired Chief Magistrate Montari Garba Dangdogo to apply for an order of mandamus seeking to compel Lawa to immediately file a charge against Dogwa and his other conspirators. 
The court gave the order upon an expertise application by counsel to the application, appl applicant rather, Barista Y. A. Sharif. The court adjourned the case to 12 May 2023 for the hearing of the motion on notice. When contacted, Abdullah said the Kano State Ministry of Justice is still waiting for the Nigerian Police Force to complete the investigation and bring back the case file. And away from legal matters, the redesign the major denominations of Nigeria's currency seems to be scarce among, amongst uh, some of the Nigerian users in circulation, and this follows the reintroduction of the old notes into circulation. Chamun Dabeng speaks to Nigerians to find out how often they get to see the old 1,000 Naira, 500 and 200 Naira notes. The report. And 200 Naira notes were reinstated following an order by the Supreme Court, which extended the deadline to December 31st. Now, the order came as a result of a debilitating Naira scarcity, which hit the nation hard and made life difficult for many Nigerians. The Central Bank of Nigeria, in a bid to reduce excess money in circulation, redesigned Nigeria's major denominations. However, since the reinstatement of the old notes, the new notes seem to be disappearing with each passing day. We don't, I don't, I don't even see I don't even see it again you go to the bank go to the ATM and now I'm going to the ATM yesterday I went to the ATM there's no new note it's the only old one we're seeing I was thinking that you want to give me some of the new ones <laughs> I don't I don't know I have not seen it. when the Naira came out newly it was uh, a little bit scarce you can only get 1,500 ah did you want to know the area now I said I said one out of 50 pieces of but now 200 now because the money no print now. One are 300 pieces now. The babu are go print come. They share them. The thing no call rich. So now make them. The scarcity of the redesigned 1,500 and 200 naira notes has left many worried that they may be a repeat naira crunch ahead of the December 31st deadline. So I don't, I don't think it's true. It's not going to. It's not the 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 deadline of the December is not. It's not going to happen. The cashiers. They say that it's, it's only the old ones they are bringing to them from CBN. And I don't have an account with CBN to go there and look for new ones. It's just like uh, when the new, one, the new one came out, they were like, uh, we should stop using the other one later, then change their mind. So I don't, I, let me, we hope so. The one, put that line where they never print money. Sell at 300 pieces, no, no, never go anywhere. You don't talk of deadline. Let them print money, if they print money, where money come? Then they go share and everybody go get a new one. Nigerians also complained about the state of the old Naira notes, with some describing them as old, torn, or falling apart. The central bank governor, Godwin Emefiele, had earlier asked Nigerians to be patient, stating that the new Naira notes would soon be available and easily accessible to Nigerians. Chamun Dabeng, Trust TV News, Abuja. You're watching Trust TV News updates still to come. Youths demand opportunities in digital economy. Details of this report and more after the break. Do stay with us. Now, as part of efforts to support Africa's goal of strengthening... Now, looking at the activity chart, as you can see right here, it's total volume of more than 30... Every time a Boko Haram crisis that at that time was restricted to Yobe. How secure that day? You can see security men with blood. The road leading up to the well, leading, if you look at England's squad, you are looking at EPL, you are looking at their name. You are not looking at
Nigeria. Year after year, they have informed, educated, and entertained us when you needed information, knowledge, or an escape. From generation to generation, the Nigerian broadcasting industry has worked tirelessly to serve you. And now, this service will finally be recognized. Come May 17th this year, broadcasters all over Nigeria will gather at the Hotel and Suites for the maiden edition of the Nigerian Broadcasting Awards, an award ceremony set to reward hard work and excellence in the broadcast media. Voting starts on 20th April and ends on 4th May 2023. Visit www.tnbawards.ng to vote now. They've served and they're still serving. It's time we say thank you. This award is organized by the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria, BON. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is News Updates on Trust TV. A reminder of our top stories. We told you that I swept a docked three humanitarian workers and security guards in Bermu State. And the federal government brings nine new grounds against Namdi Kanu's release as Supreme Court adjourns a trial till May. And moving on to other stories, First Lady Aisha Buhari has called for adequate investment in the treatment and prevention of cardiovascular diseases in the country. She made the call on Wednesday when she received beneficiaries of a free heart surgery at Presidential Villa Abuja. The beneficiaries were at the villa on a thank you visit to the First Lady for her assistance. The First Lady also expressed her desire to continue collaboration with all the development partners in the health sector towards providing the necessary care to children of underprivileged families in Nigeria. The Chief and Medical Director of Federal Medical Center, Jabi Saad Ahmed, expressed gratitude to the First Lady for the partnership with the Italian surgeons, where expertise were shared during the operation. Received to provide free heart surgeries and interventions to Nigerians in need of such care. But through my organization, the Aisha Body Foundation and Future Assured, we are able to partner with an international heart surgery team led by Professor Opido, an Italian, as well as the Federal Medical Center, Jabi, the Cedar Crest and Cardio Hospitals to provide this help, which we believe will bring Soko some of these, to some of those in need of such services. We thank God Today we are able to celebrate together the success we are able to achieve as I have been informed that all the patients who were treated and discharged have, have fully recovered. So like uh, Claire said, this is official assured a plea. We have seen it physically playing out here. These children, some of them tomorrow will be doctors, will be nurses, some will be president of this country, and uh, just name it. So these are the great resources that we have in this country. You have actually put in a lot in giving them a very bright future. We thank you so much for having confidence in us at Federal Medical Center by bringing the other resource from Italy, they joined forces, and today we are here celebrating the good life of these people. The unemployment rate in Nigeria continues to rise. Youths in the country are demanding opportunities in digital economy. The youths are calling on government at all levels to take actions to tackle unemployment to encourage young persons to stay and thrive in the country. Hamid Oyegbade has the report. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the national unemployment rate in Nigeria increased from 23.1% in 2018 to 33.3% in 2020. NBS estimates that this rate has increased to 37.7% in 2022 
and will rise further to 40.6% in 2023. Youths in the country are calling on governments to provide them with opportunities to tap into the digital economy. Things are now done digitally. We youth can gainfully employ and engage in the use of the internet to scale and upscale our career. Some people have been utilized, some of us have been utilizing it to develop our careers. Okay, I want the government to put more effort by creating enough job opportunity for Nigerian youth because we have a lot of youth out there that are jobless. If they are, they are high do, and you know, they said the devil used the I do person. How the government can help is by providing platforms for youth to attain these digital skills, to learn these skills, and not just learn, also provide them an opportunity to practice what they have learned. Meanwhile, the United Nations Children Fund, in collaboration with National Orientation Agency, is supporting youths with training on digital platforms to earn legitimate income. We see a lot of resilience from young people. They are very creative, they are very innovative. But I think one of the things that we need, we need to really ensure that these young people are ready is empower them, provide them with the tools, give them the necessary support, both financial and, and, uh, and, 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 and capacity development to ensure that whatever they are doing, there is, they are productive. They should be focused and know that there are opportunities here. And there are so many technical opportunities too, especially on social media. Social media is not necessarily um, for um, um, negative things like um, Yahoo Yahoo and stuff like that. UNICEF called on media to raise awareness on opportunities available for youth on digital platforms and amplify their voices to attract government attention so that policy makers will take necessary actions in addressing unemployment in the country. Amid Ojebade, Trust TV News. Now in business, the African Development Bank, AFDB, and the Japan International Cooperation Agency, GICA, have signed a $350 million loan to assist to Enhanced Private Sector Assistance Initiative, a component of Japan's official development assistance to Africa. In August 2022, at the 8th Tokyo International Conference on African Development in Tunis, the parties signed the fifth version of the EPSA $4 billion. The signing ceremony for the private sector concessional loan occurred at GICA's headquarters in Tokyo between GICA President Tanaka Akiko and F AFDB's President Akiwumi Additional. Additional is in Japan to discuss investment opportunities in Africa with senior government officials, large Japanese companies, development partners, parliamentarians, and the African Diplomatic Corps. The GICA's president said the loan represented a crucial step in Japan's effort to work with AFDB to support Africa. And now, and now on the international scene, Sudan, Kenya's authority said Thursday had arrested another pastor over suspected deaths as its church, as police, or as police arrested widening an investigation following dozens of deaths linked to a court leader. Ezekiel Odero, the head of the new life prayer center in church was arrested in the coastal town of Malindi following allegations of the death that had been occurring at his premises, said Roda Onyancha, the government commissioner for the region. Police have not connected him to Paul McKinsey, uh, the alleged court leader on the investigation for the deaths of 98 people linked to his church and also based in the coastal region. Odero, dressed in his signature all-white gap, and clutched a Bible was transferred from Malindi to the regional police headquarters in Mombasa 
for questioning, while the televangelist who draws huge crowds, his church south of Malindi, can sit 40,000 people. Odara claims that holy scraps of cloth sold at his mega rallies can heal sickness. And now in sports, the Golden Inglés and head coach Nduka Ugbade has revealed that his team's ambition ahead of the start of 2023 African on the 17th Cup of Nations in Algeria. The competition will start on Saturday with the Golden Eaglet among the 12 countries that will battle for the ultimate prize and World Cup ticket. The two-time champions arrived in Algeria on Sunday after a trip to Germany was aborted due to logistical challenges. And that brings us to the end of the news update at this hour. For more, you can follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.